Here, a thin convex lens is made up of two different materials having the refractive index n1 and n2. Now, it is said that when n1 equal to n2 equal to n, its focal length is f. But when n1 equal to n and n2 equal to n plus delta n, its focal length is f plus delta f. Another very important information which is given is delta n is very very less than n minus 1 and the value of n lies in between 1 to 2. Now with this information we have to check which options are correct. Now if you see the options carefully in most of the cases you are getting delta f by f delta f by f finding the value of delta f here also delta f by f and delta n by n. So somewhere I'll have to find delta f by f. Now how I will get it? So in the very beginning, I'll just try to get what is given. So f is given. So it is 1 by f, which is nothing but mu minus 1, 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. This is the most general formula for uh, finding the focal length of a lens. So here it is given as 1 by f for the refractive index of n. And this will be 1 by r minus 1 by minus r. And hence you have 1 by f equal to n minus 1 into 2 upon r. So this is the relation for 1 by f. Now he is saying that the focal length turns out to be f plus delta f. So for that what I should write f plus delta f will be 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2. Why? Because I will say that the focal length of this half part is f1 and the focal length of another half part is f2. Now what will be that value? So if you try to solve 1 plus delta f now f1 is nothing but mu minus 1, 1 by r1. So it is n minus 1, 1 by r and r2 is infinity. So simply it will turn out to be n minus 1 by r. Similarly, how much will be 1 by f2? Well, for 1 by f2, you will have again this as n plus delta n. So n plus delta n minus 1, 1 by r1 is infinity. r1 is infinity. So this will be 0. Minus 1 by minus r. So it will become plus 1 by r and hence it will be by r. So how much will be this value? 2 times n minus 1 plus delta n upon r. This is f plus delta f. Now if I take the ratio of this to 1 by f upon 1 plus f 1 by f plus delta f then f plus delta f upon f. Well how much will be this value? Well this is ratio of this two. So it will be simply 2 times n minus 1, r r will get cancelled out. This is 2 times n minus 1 plus delta n. Now if I subtract this, f plus delta f minus f, then it will be delta f upon f. So here I will have to do 2 times n minus 1 minus 2 times n minus 1 minus delta n upon 2 times n minus 1 plus delta n. Now this is going to get cancelled out. So what you left with is delta f by f is minus delta n upon 2 into n minus 1 plus delta n. Now I can neglect this delta n in terms of in front of n minus 1 because it has been said delta n is very very small. So you get the relation as minus delta n upon 2 times n minus 1. Now this is a very important relation which we are getting in terms of delta f by f. Well, we can get the same relation by some other way also. Now what is that other way? By differentiating. Now see carefully that 1 by f is nothing but 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2. If I differentiate this, it will be minus df by f square. This will be d1 by f1 plus d1 by f2. But how much is d1 by f1? It is 0 because the focal length of first half part is not changing because its refractive index is remaining same. Now I'll have to just differentiate this 1 by f2. Well d of 1 by f2 is going to be how much d of. Now what was 1 by f2? Well it was n plus delta n minus 1 1 by r. This is what we have already found out. So it is n plus delta n minus 1 by r. Now I'll have to differentiate this. Now before differentiating n plus delta n is almost equal to n because n minus 1 is much much greater than delta n. So I can neglect that and it will become n minus 1 1 by r. This is d of 1 by f2. Now again if you try to differentiate this it will turn out to be dn by r because derivative of 1 will be 0. So this is dn by r is nothing but minus df by 
f square so you will get df by f equal to f into minus of dn by r so you will left with df by f and you will have to substitute this value of f how much is the value of this f r into 2 r 1, uh, 1 by f is this so f is equal to r upon 2 into n minus 1 so if i substitute here i'll get minus dn upon 2 into n minus 1 so i'm getting the same relation over here and over here they are the identical relation so one can go by any method it's up to you that how you want to solve it after that after getting this relation now we can go for the option now here check it out if delta n by n is less than 0 then delta f by f is greater than 0 whether it is correct so delta n by n less than 0 now n is positive number so delta n is negative now if delta n is negative 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 will become positive and hence delta f by f will be greater than 0 hence first option is the correct answer now for n equal to 1.5 and delta n 10 raised to minus 3 and focal length 20 centimeter we want to find the value of delta f now you just have to multiply this f f into delta n upon 2 times n minus 1 you substitute this value and you will also get this delta f to be equal to 0 0.2 now uh, fourth option says what the relation between delta f by f and delta n by n remains unchanged if we replace the convex surface by concave surface now whether it is uh, of the same radius now uh, first of all it is not depending anywhere on the uh, radius so it doesn't matter whether the surface is convex or concave it is anyhow not going to change and this is also the correct answer now we have to check whether this delta f by f is less than delta mod of delta n by n or not so what is the delta f by f it is minus dn upon 2 times n minus 1 so mod of it will be nothing but delta n upon 2 times n minus 1 and what he's saying it is less than delta n by n now this will get cancel out so you'll get n less than 2n minus 2 so effectively you will get 2 and this is n so you get n greater than 2 here you get n greater than 2 but what is given that n lies in between 1 to 2 so it contradicts and hence this is not the correct answer hence the answer option for this questions were a b and d In this question, the arrangement is shown. Uh, here the refractive index is 1.44, this refractive index is 1.5, this refractive index is 1.44. And it is said that the light which is entering at AB leaves the surface CD. Now when he gives this statement, it means the problem setter has to convey the information that you should consider the light is performing a total internal reflection and in that sense it is coming out of CD. So when it enters the AB, it is leaving the CD, means here there must be TIR. Now when it will have a TIR, when this angle is greater than critical angle, greater than or equal to critical angle. So let's assume that uh, it is falling on this surface at an angle of theta 1. So now if I assume that it falls at an angle of theta 1, from the simple geometry, sin theta 1 turns out to be how much? x by d. So this is one of the important relations which we have why you will realize now if suppose it goes a distance x horizontally then actually the ray travels a distance of d inside this now how many such x are possible over the distance of l so there are l by x such intervals are possible and in one x interval it goes a distance d so in l by x it will cover a distance of dl by x so this is the distance covered by light inside this when it goes from AB to CD. Now how much will be this? Well, it will turn out to be L by sin theta 1. This is the distance covered. Now what do you want to find? You want to find the maximum time taken. Now to find the maximum time taken, your distance should be maximum. Now when your distance will be maximum, when this sin theta 1 will be minimum and when your sin theta 1 will be minimum, so it will be 0 in true sense but it is not allowed to take it 0 because you want the internal reflection here. So it must be minimum and at minimum angle will turn out to be sin theta c. 
therefore your distance will be equal to l by sin theta c where theta c is a critical angle now how much will that is going to be sin theta c will be 1.44 and this is the 9.6 into 1.5 upon 1.44 so this is the maximum distance it is traveling now we want to find the maximum time so just divide by the speed of light in this medium but what will be the speed of light in this medium so the speed of light is going to be c by mu so it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 divided by a refractive index of this this is 1.5 and hence your time taken is going to be how much now so your time taken will be this distance 9.6 into 1.5 1.44 divided by the speed so it turns out to be 3 into 10 raised to 8 and this is 1.5 this one now if you solve it gives me the answer as 50 into 10 raised to minus 9 if you compare this with this then you will get the answer as 50 now this calculation is very simple you can just solve it that that has to be taken care by you so answer turns out to be 50. In this question the three glass cylinders are kept as shown and it is said that the refractive index of all of them is 1.5 and their uh, depth is 30 meter but the only difference is here the surface is flat here it is uh, convex and here it is concave and both of them have the radius as 300 centimeter now what uh, we have to find is the relation between h1 h2 h3 where h1 h2 h3 are the apparent depth of point x so uh, this is very simple question because um, we know that when it is a flat surface the apparent depth is h by mu so depth is h 30 centimeter mu is 1.5 so when you solve it you will get h1 to be 20 centimeter now if i want to find the same uh, apparent depth i'll have to find uh, it using the refraction at the spherical surface so when you are observing from here the object is inside this refractive index 1.5 at a depth of 30 from the spherical refracting surface so I'll simply use mu2 by v minus mu1 by u equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r now substitute that mu2 is 1 because mu2 is air so 1 by v minus mu1 is 1.5 it is at a distance of minus 30 and then 1 minus 1.5 upon r now this r because it is something like this an object is on this side that r has to be taken negative so it will be minus 300 you solve this you get v to be minus 20.68 means its image of this point x will be at a distance of 20.68 on the same side as that of the x so you get h2 to be equal to 20.68 similarly if you go for this cylinder again you use the uh, refraction at spherical surface formula and then substitute the values here again mu2 will be 1 v i don't know i have to calculate minus 1.5 minus 30 because it is at the same uh, depth that is 30 and 1 minus 1.5 but now this time your r will be plus 300 again you solve this you get h3 to be equal to 19.35 now clearly from these values you can compare and you can see that h2 greater than h1 obviously h2 greater than h3 but h3 is not greater than h1 so this is not correct answer and if you do the subtraction of h2 and h1 it turns out to be 0 0.6 set but here it is said that it lies in between 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 so this is not the correct answer and hence the answer option for it will be a and b here a monochromatic light is falling on a prism at an angle of theta the angle of prism is given to be 75 the refractive index of prism is root 3 and on this side the refractive index of the material is n it is said that the light suffers the total internal reflection at the coated surface for the theta less than or equal to 60 degree 
Now, if it is the condition that theta less than or equal to 60, it is having a TIR, then at theta equal to 60, the angle over here, what it is going to make with the normal must be a critical angle. So, I'll first assume that theta equal to 60 and in that case, I'll get by using a Snell's law, 1 into sine 60 equal to this mu uh, root 3 into sine theta 1. Sine 60 is root 3 by 2, so root 3, root 3 by 2, 1 by 2 and hence your theta 1 is going to become 30 degree. Now, once you have this theta 1 30 degree, you know that theta 1 plus this theta c will be the angle of prism at this, uh, in this case and therefore your critical angle will turn out to be 75 minus 30 that is 45 and therefore using the relation of sin theta c you will get sin theta c equal to mu of rarer upon mu of denser and hence the sin 40 45 is going to be 1 by root 2 mu of rarer is nothing but n and denser is root 3 so your n will be equal to root 3 by root 2 but what they are asking us n square which will be 3 by 2 and hence your answer for this question will be 1.5 now you can again uh, check out here that if your theta is less than 60 degree now what will happen if suppose it is 30 degree or less than 60 then this will be definitely less than 30 degree if this is less than 30 degree this will be definitely greater than 45 degree and if it is greater than 45 degree then in this case it will be having a total internal reflection so that's why it is said that for all theta less than 60 it will perform the total internal reflection so this is how one can solve this very very simple question